Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at an awful comparison between the Switch and the Steam Deck. Video comes from Watch Mojo, and they definitely didn't get positive reception on this one. Now this video has some insane reaching for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, he goes on to say the online functionality of the Switch is better, and I'm not even kidding. But I don't want to waste too much time because there's a lot I have to say in this video, so let's go. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're taking a look at which handheld device is best for you. It's the Steam Deck versus the Nintendo Switch. Have you picked up either of these devices yet? Which one do you feel is right for you? Alright, I've had both devices for a while now. I had the Switch since it first came out, and I've had the Steam Deck for about a year, and I can definitely say I prefer the Steam Deck more. It allows me to play the majority of my PC library, it allows me to mod my games, it allows me to do pretty much anything a computer can do, including run Switch games at better performance than the Switch can. It has free online, whereas the Switch don't, and its online is better. It allows me to connect any controller I want. The device feels much nicer in the hands, I feel like the Switch is too small for my hands. And finally, the Steam Deck is extremely powerful, much more powerful than the Nintendo Switch. Now if you prefer the Nintendo Switch, that's fine, but I'm just pointing out why I think the Steam Deck is better. Let us know down in the comments. Round 1. Hardware. We have and a then lot we of have cables, of course. All the things. Right. Cables. When it comes to specs, Nintendo has been known to run their games on less powerful hardware, at least when compared to other plastic boxes from Sony and Microsoft. Compared to Valve's Steam Deck, it's the same old song and dance even with the more recent OLED model. However, that doesn't take away from the system's performance and visual fidelity. Many of the Switch's games look and run just as great as they play. I wouldn't say games look and run great on the Switch. You're lucky to get 30 FPS in a lot of games, and even with Nintendo's big titles such as Zelda, they're still going down into the teens when it comes to frame rate. Now on the Steam Deck, if you're not happy with your performance, you can go ahead and tweak some graphic settings or download a performance mod, but on the Switch you don't have that choice. And this really sucks because a lot of games such as Tears of the Kingdom are really fun, but they're limited by their bad performance. At least the first party stuff does. Your mileage may vary when it comes to third party titles. But aside from having a beefier CPU, GPU, and RAM, what does Steam Deck do that Nintendo don't? Allow you to mod your games, use any controller you want, allow you to play online for free, allow you to emulate older consoles and emulate newer consoles such as the Switch, and play Switch games in better performance than the Switch can. Those are just a few examples, but the point is, the Steam Deck is much less restrictive than the Switch. Everything the Nintendo Switch can do, the Steam Deck can do better, plus more. Well, it's basically a PC in the palm of your hand, and one of the benefits of PC gaming is that just about every game comes with some handy dandy settings. Adjust resolutions, frame rates, visual effects, and more to your heart's content, shaping the games in the way you want to experience them. This aspect of gaming has only just recently come to consoles with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. I mean, I wouldn't really say that the PS5 and Xbox Series consoles really give you all that much choice when it comes to changing your settings. At most, they'll give you the option to play in a performance mode or a quality mode, which are two preset graphic settings. The Steam Deck actually allows you to go in and change things such as the graphic settings, the shadows, the anti-aliasing, etc, etc. Personally, it would be great to see these things come to console because I think console players deserve to get to change their settings as well. As for the Switch? The games look and run in the way Nintendo intended them to be. Unfortunately, that happens to be for some games like Tears of the Kingdom 720p 20-30 FPS. The Steam Deck allows you to play games such as Doom Eternal at a perfect 60. And you just have to live with that. No contest here. We'll take flexible settings on any given day. Winner, Steam Deck. Steam Deck is a full-featured gaming PC that lets you bring the games you love wherever you go. Round 2. Online Functionality. Okay, I don't know why this guy just puts random gameplay segments after he's done talking, and they're not even, like, related to what he's saying. And out of all gameplay you could use, why do you pick the gameplay of some guy just standing around? Now, you're probably looking at the Switch and thinking, Nintendo and online functionality? Only in your dreams, Watch Mojo. Yes, we are very well aware of Nintendo's tumultuous history with online games and connectivity. 
to their credit, things have improved with the Switch. This is true, they have gotten better with the Switch, but the thing is they're nowhere near as good as the Steam Deck and you have to pay for an inferior online experience. Paying for online is something I've already made a video about because I think it's incredibly pathetic across the board. It's pathetic for Microsoft, pathetic for PlayStation, and pathetic for Nintendo. And the worst part is, Nintendo Switches online used to be free, but then they took it away from you and sold it back to you. And yet you'll still have people like Harmon Smith that'll come out here and say Nintendo's a pro-consumer company. Like sure, their games are fun, but they're anti-consumer as fuck. Though they aren't much better. So, if you're looking to play online games on a handheld with reliable connectivity, the Steam Deck might be better for you. He says this, but then he goes on to basically try to justify why the Switch's online is better. Watch this. But, that is not the only online feature to consider here. You need to consider downloading games, and this is where the Switch prevails over the Steam Deck. You are going to need an online connection in order to sync your Steam account with your deck, in addition to installing games to your deck. Well, no fucking shit! I mean, thanks for pointing out the obvious, I guess. You have to connect to the internet to download something off the internet. Whoa. It is an all-digital device, just as PC gaming has been as a whole for the last decade or so. Okay, the PC is not all-digital. Yes, most people play digital on PC, but you still can play physically, but not that many people do it. With a Switch, yes, you still need an online connection to purchase and download digital-only games. But if you're someone with a spotty ISP, you still have an alternative to play games without eating up data. Many Switch games are physically released by both Nintendo and publishers big and small. So, if you have a cartridge, you can play it the second you pop it into the console. In our eyes, physical games will always prevail due to their easy accessibility. Winner, Nintendo Switch. So let me get this straight, you're gonna give a point to the Switch for online functionality for something that has nothing to do with online functionality. This is what I mean when I say he's just reaching to try to make the Nintendo Switch look better. Not only is the Steam Deck's online functionality 10 times better than the Switch, it's also free. But according to WatchMojo, because you can go out and get a physical cartridge and play without ever connecting to the internet, that means the online functionality is better on the Switch rather than the Steam Deck. Makes sense. Guys, it's Enderman. Oh, I do not like this. No, 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 no. Tony, stop looking at them. Ah, get away, get away, get away, get away. Gosh. Round three, pricing. We know players will use their decks in different ways, in different places, attached to different devices. When shopping for new tech, it's important to not only compare prices between similar products, but also consider what you're getting for said price. Personally, I'd say the Steam Deck is better in terms of pricing. Like, yes, it costs more, but you're getting a lot more for your money. I mean, you're basically getting a PC with around the power of a PlayStation 4 in the palm of your hand, and it's only like 400 bucks. I'd also like to point out the fact that you're saving a lot of money by playing on the Steam Deck because of Steam sales. The Nintendo Switch OLED will run you $349 USD, only a $50 increase to the cost of a standard Switch. What you get is a slightly bigger screen than the other Switch models, a 64GB internal storage, a wider and adjustable stand to prop the console up, a LAN port, which other Switches don't have for some reason, improved audio capabilities, and of course, a beautiful and lush OLED screen. The Steam Deck, on the other hand, is on a whole other level because, well, like we said earlier, it's a PC in the palm of your hand. Not only can you play certain Steam games on it, you can do just about anything you would normally do on a computer. Browse the web, check your email, watch movies from streaming services, go down a WatchMojo rabbit hole at 3am, the whole nine yards. I mean, he says all this, but at the end of this video, he still tries to claim that the Nintendo Switch is the winner. The only question is, how powerful do you want it to be? If you want the most basic and cheapest option, it's going to run you about 400 bucks. Which by the way, even the lowest priced Steam Deck still has infinitely more storage than the Nintendo Switch. But if you want faster storage and a durable screen, you're looking at $649 USD. Hey, we'll bite the bullet for a smaller PC, especially given how much power you get in such a diminutive device. Winner, Steam Deck. <laughs> Round 4 games. Yeah, this one right here should be a no-brainer. The Steam Deck obviously beats the Switch when it comes to games. The Steam Deck allows you to play a good majority of the games on Steam, and it actually lets you play more Nintendo games than the Nintendo Switch. If you want to play something like Wind Waker on your Steam Deck, you can go ahead and do so with emulation, whereas on the Nintendo Switch, you gotta wait for Nintendo to overcharge you for a port. Oh, look, I got one. <laughs> now, this is where folks need to question how much they value what they have now versus what they could be getting in the future. 
Emphasis on could. The Steam Deck is a powerful handheld, yes, but what makes some- Why is he showing Half-Life Alex on the screen? That is a VR game. No shit, it's not gonna run on the Steam Deck. Still a little squeamish about grabbing one is the Steam Deck Verified Badge. Many of us who have been on Steam since the early years have racked up an exceptionally large library of games. Unfortunately, not all of these games have been tested for the Steam Deck. But at least the Steam Deck allows you to play your games you've collected over the years on the PC. The Nintendo Switch doesn't have backwards compatibility with the 3DS and Wii U. Also, just because a game isn't verified doesn't mean it won't run well. If a game has a yellow icon next to it, it means the game is playable, but you might have to tinker a little bit. You might have to set up a new control scheme or something like that to play the game. I've played tons of games that have the yellow icon next to them, and they ran perfectly. Dark Souls 2, for example, ran at a locked 60 at high settings, and it had a little yellow icon next to it. I had no issues with that game. Steam Deck verified means the game is confirmed to run on the system does not guarantee flawless performance. So, just because a game is verified does not mean you won't come across any problems later. Some games will even require users to manually adjust their settings and controls in order for the game to function properly. Oh no, dude, changing settings. But at least the Steam Deck allows you to change your settings, the Switch doesn't. That said, even if you have a library loaded with hundreds of titles, you may only be able to properly run a fraction of them on your Steam Deck. I'd say it's closer to like 75% of them you can actually play, but the thing is, even if a game's unsupported, a lot of the times you can use like a Proton Launcher to get the game running fine. Some games are playable, but require some extra effort to interact with or configure. On Switch, it's a much simpler process. Nintendo enforces a strict policy for games to load up on the Switch before allowing them to be published on the platform. So, just about every single game you see on the shelf of retailers or the Nintendo eShop are guaranteed to run. Simplicity beats out guessing across every timeline. Winner, Nintendo Switch. So you're gonna give this point to the Switch because the Switch doesn't allow you to change settings to get some games working. At least the Steam Deck gives you the option to play these games. A lot of games that get the yellow icon on the Steam Deck aren't even available on the Switch, but you can get those games as long as you change some settings. The Switch just doesn't give you the games. But apparently, because some games might require you to change settings, that means the Switch is better when it comes to games. I mean, you can literally play more Nintendo games on the Steam Deck than the Switch because of emulation. Round 5. Portability. Here, let me get that for you. This is perhaps the biggest draw of both consoles. Gaming on the go is a drive many folks crave, given the questionable quality of mobile games and the lack of support for now-dead handhelds like the Nintendo 3DS and PlayStation Vita. The Switch and Deck both make portability the most important aspect of their experience. No license verifications or DRMs are required in order to play games offline. So long as your game is installed, you're good to go. Though, in the Switch's case, you will need to make sure your account has the system listed as the primary console. Even so, it's not really a problem. But this is where the Switch steals the show. Take a good, long look at the Steam Deck. Now take a good, long look at the Switch. What does Nintendo do that Steam Deck don't? Send somebody a cease and desist for holding a tournament on a 20-year-old game? Not just gaming on the go, but multiplayer on the go. Yes, we know Steam Deck does support multiplayer too. The problem is that you need to provide your own controller and a cable to connect to the Steam Deck. The Switch is far more convenient. If you're out and about with your Switch, you most likely have both Joy-Con controllers with you, and both Joy-Con controllers double as two separate controllers. So the Switch is more portable because you can detach the controllers. That literally makes no sense at all. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that you can detach the Joy-Cons. I think that's a cool feature. But to say it's more portable because of that is idiotic. Also, the Steam Deck allows you to use any controller you want, or even a keyboard and mouse if you prefer that, whereas the Nintendo Switch forces you to use Nintendo controllers. So if you somehow bump into a friend, the two of you can sit down for a round or two of Smash or Mario Kart and play together right on the spot. No additional setup required. Convenience for the sake of friends is what wins the Switch this round and the entire debate. For us, at least. Winner, Nintendo Switch. And that pretty much wraps up the video. He basically claims that the Switch is better because it doesn't let you customize game settings to make games playable. Um, you can use games offline, which means it has better online functionality, and it's more portable. You know, for somebody with 25 million subscribers, I expected better. Alright, peace.